So I scroll in TikTok Live this morning, and I heard this woman say that one of the authors of Project 2025 had been tapped to do the Oklahoma Social Studies curriculum, and I had to look that up immediately. So this is an article from the Daily Beast. Oklahoma's top education official, who last month mandated that middle and high schools must incorporate the Bible and the Ten Commandments into their curriculum, unveiled a new plan this week to move his state's public schools even further to the right. Look at this purple highlighted section. Superintendent Kevin, I mean Ryan Walters, plans to overhaul Oklahoma's social studies curriculum with the help of a committee that includes a laundry list of right-wing think tank veterans and influencers, including Heritage Foundation President Kevin uh, Roberts, whose work on the presidential policy proposal document Project 2025 has gone viral in recent days. Also included on the list is conservative radio host and media personality Den Dennis Prager, whose empire of educational YouTube videos named Prager University, despite its lack of accreditation, has been likened to ultra-nationalistic propaganda shown in authoritarian countries like North Korea and China. Walters promised his revisions to the social studies curriculum will eliminate DEI indoctrination and return teaching back to the basics in Oklahoma. I am so glad I have left that state and poor, poor students. These poor students are going to not be prepared for the real world if and when they ever get out of the bubble of Oklahoma. Teachers unions have been rewriting history, teaching students to hate America, but not under my watch, Walters added in a statement to the conservative-leaning Washington Examiner. Our goal is to give Oklahoma students an education that focuses on history, not indoctrination. The executive committee that we've assembled are experts in American exceptionalism, our founding fathers, and historical documents like the Bible. These things are essential to understanding our history. It remains unclear what exactly the committee plans to change in the state's curriculum, but the move is firmly in line with the priorities Walters has already expressed for his tenure as Oklahoma's top education official and build on several initiatives he has already implemented. PragerU videos, remember, that are not accredited, for example, were already being played in Oklahoma classrooms after Walters approved them last September. These non-accredited videos being played in schools in Oklahoma. The inclusion of Roberts, the creator of Project 2025, is sure to prove especially controversial. The 900-page conservative po policy wish list is intended to serve as a blueprint for President Donald Trump's second term, should he win in November, and include a number of contentious proposals like gutting the federal workforce, mass deportations, reversing same-sex marriage, outlaw medical abortion, and tighten access to abortion medication, among many others. The plan has in recent weeks been covered extensively with many Democrats and media personalities decrying many of the proposals extreme nature. Roberts also found himself in the middle of a personal firestorm when he said during a cable news interview, we are in the process of the second American revolution, which will remain bloodless if the left allows it to be. In recent days, Trump and other Republicans have tried to distance Trump from Project 2025. It's not working. He said he doesn't know them people. He's like, I don't know them people. He's a liar. He's a liar. If he's talking, he's lying. If he's truth socialing, he's lying. But um, here is um, here's a video of him talking to the Heritage Foundation back in 22, where he admits that he knows that they are laying a foundation for this mandate. Country is going to hell. The critical job of institutions such as Heritage is to lay the groundwork, and Heritage does such an incredible job at that. This is a great group, and they're going to lay the groundwork and detail plans for exactly what our movement will do and what your movement will do when the American people give us a colossal mandate to save America. And that's coming. That's coming. Our country. And then you'll see, I have it circled right here. This is on the Project 2025 website, project2025.org. 
in this document, in this website, because I know that people are not going to read that 900 page document. They're just not going to. But they say, and I underlined it right here, the next conservative president will enter office on January 20th, 2025 with a simple choice, greatness or failure. Now, who are they talking about? <laughs> if they're saying the next conservative president, and currently there's two people running for president, um, one is Trump, one is Biden, who could Project 2025 be talking about? They're sitting up here saying that they are not um, connected to Trump. Trump is saying that he's not connected to 20, uh, Project 2025. They're all some liars. So here's Project 2025's Twitter page. It says, preparing to support the next president, the next conservative president, with over 110 organizations for victories through policy, personnel, and training. Help decimate the deep state. So they say the next conservative president. Who are they talking about? Then they put out a tweet, myths versus facts about Project 2025. We are not affiliated with former President Trump. Why are these people lying? And then they, they sit up and talk about they're not trying to end no-fault divorce. They're not trying to do a complete ban on promotions. They, these people are some absolute liars. They have the whole mandate right there, but they know that people are not going to read through this mandate. Um, but anyways, I just want to um, show you guys how these people are simply trying to distance themselves, even though on their um, website, they talk about how President Trump or former President Trump put through like 67 percent of their initiatives within the first year of their term. That is literally on their Project 2025 website. These people worked in his administration, like 80 percent of the people that worked on this mandate, worked in his administration. These people are awesome liars. All right, jump in the comments. Let me know what you think. Let me know what you think about Oklahoma curriculum, including the authors of this project. I mean, I keep talking about the fact that all of this is, is all connected. These people in these forced birther, Christo fascist states are literally trying to take us to a theocracy and they're turning their states into a theocracy. So go ahead and chime in. Let me know your thoughts. Like, comment, and share. So a woman sent me an email with this story that happened out of the UK. It says, bushy crossbow unalivings, suspect taken to hospital after being located as it happened. Manhunt was launched after Carol Hunt, 61, and two of her daughters, Hannah and Louise, were found in their home where they later unalived. The woman who sent me this email says, more info from the UK. Three women were unalived by a man with a crossbow. It's getting medieval here. Although this isn't the first crossbow um, unaliving of recent times. They were the wife and daughters of a BBC racing correspondent. I say that because it means that it'll be even more high profile. I didn't understand why these women were targeted but now it transpires that one of the women had broken up with the with that man. The suspect had also been in the British Army. His brother is serving a life sentence for unaliving someone. Men are at their most dangerous when you leave them. There are some comments in the YouTube streets which say that women need to be careful who they date. However, I believe that this is being said because the the unaliver seems to be of mixed origin is getting wild in these uk streets we say this all the time when a woman leaves or when she's pregnant it is a very very dangerous time for women and so putting it on the women about you know who um be careful who you date who you start out dating is not who you end up with when it's time to break up those two people are completely different at times. And this story is definitely tragic. I'm going to get back to the article now. All right. Triple unaliving suspect caught by the police. A man accused of deleting three people with a crossbow has been caught by the police and taken to the hospital. Kyle Clifford, 26, was caught in the Hilly Fields area of Enfield by armed police and paramedics. Police say the suspect was found this afternoon and is receiving medical treatment after being found with injuries. No shots were fired by the officers. 
It comes after a police manhunt after Carol, 61, and her daughters, Hannah and Louise, were found seriously injured at a home in Bushy, Hertfordshire, about 1900 on Tuesday, and then they later expired at the scene. Here are the three women. The mom is in the middle and her two daughters. So a summary of the developments, a man wanted in connection with the triple um, unaliving um, was found in North London at a cemetery on Wednesday with injuries after a major police hunt. Kyle Clifford, Clifford, who was understood to have served in the British Army for about a year, was detained and taken to the hospital after being found by officers. Um, he is receiving medical treatment. No shots were fired. Clifford was named as a suspect by Hertfordshire police after the deaths of those three women. At this stage, police believe the suspect was known to the victims and no one else is being sought in connection with the investigation. Chief Superintendent John Simpson from the Hertfordshire police told reporters the suspected unalivings were believed to be targeted. Tributes have been paid to three women taken out in an utterly devastating crossbow attack. Sue Kenhindi, 60, who lives nearby, said they were the loveliest, gentlest family. They were the meekest human beings. They did not deserve this. They were beautiful souls. Even if they were not meek, even if they were ugly, even if they were not particularly kind or whatever, no one deserves to be taken out simply because you broke up with somebody. <sighs> Pupils at schools, including St. Michael's Primary School in Enfield, were kept inside as a precaution during the manhunt on Wednesday afternoon. All right, well, he has been taken into, um, he's been taken in, but it just goes to show that breaking up with somebody, these people are failing and flailing, and they are taking people out with them. So now this person is going to be going to jail like his brother, and three women are gone. All right, go ahead, join the conversation. Let me know what you think about this one. Don't forget to like, comment, and share. So if you've been anywhere near the news or social media, you know that many states are under a heat advisory. Texas is definitely feeling the heat. Anger mounts in Southeast Texas as crippling power outages and heat turn deadly. Frustrations are mounting across the Southeast Texas as residents enter a fourth day of crippling power outages and heat a combination that has proven dangerous and at times deadly as some struggle to access gas, um, food, gas, and medical care. Nearly 1.3 million homes and businesses across the region are still without power after barrels slammed into the Gulf Coast as a Category 1 hurricane on Monday, leaving at least 11 people dead across Texas and Louisiana. The storm continues to threaten, threaten flooding Thursday in New England. Governor Greg Abbott has requested an investigation of Centerpoint Energy, Houston's primary utility company that is responsible for restoring the vast majority of outages. Electric companies in the wake of the outages, Lieutenant, Lieutenant Governor Dan Patrick said during the news conference on Thursday. The investigation will look into what the problem were in the utilities response to Hurricane Barrel. I'm sure we will find that there are things they could have done better, Patrick said. Many residents are sheltering with friends or family who have power, but some can't afford to leave their homes. Houston City Councilman Julian Ramirez told CNN Wednesday, and while countless families have lost food in the warming fridges, many stores are still closed, leaving government offices, food banks, and other public services scrambling to distribute food to underserved areas. As residents desperately try to cool their homes with generators, carbon monoxide poisoning has become a serious concern. At least two people have died in Harris County from carbon monoxide poisoning, and fire departments have received more than 200 carbon monoxide poisoning calls in 24 hours. Beyond that, a 71-year-old a woman died near Crystal Beach after her oxygen machine ran out of battery power and her generator shut down. Heat-related medical emergencies are also spiking in Houston as 90-degree temperatures blanket southeast Texas, Fire Chief Samuel Pena said. The heat index, a measure of how the body feels under both heat and humidity, could reach 106 degrees in some areas, a life-threatening scenario for people without adequate cooling. The dangerous heat, driven by human-caused climate change, hasn't been limited to Texas, 
At least 28 heat-related deaths in the West have been reported since July 1st, as a record-breaking heat as record-breaking heat waves beat down on um, states including California, Oregon, and Arizona. But some people, more than others, believe that climate change is not real, and some states, like Texas, are not preparing themselves adequately because they don't actually believe in climate change, despite the fact that we can see evidence of climate change each year. Now, if you remember, Texas had a bit of a um, of, of a situation um, during a winter time. Y'all remember when Ted Cruz was escaping the winter heat and he went to Cancun? Ted Cruz flew to Cancun, Mexico on Wednesday with plans to stay through the weekend as hundreds of thousands of his constituents with, without power and heat in Texas after a winter storm caused by deadly outages. Addressing reporters outside his home in Houston on Thursday, Cruz admitted his original intentions, but claimed he started having second thoughts almost the moment I sat down on the plane. As parents, we have a responsibility to take care of our family, but I also have a responsibility that I take very seriously of fighting for the state of Texas. Frankly, leaving when so many Texans were hurting didn't feel right, and so I flew back on the first available flight I could take. It was obviously a mistake. In hindsight, I wouldn't have done it. He said he understood why people were upset, but suggesting the venom and vitriol of Twitter and the media fed into it. So, yes, I, I'm wondering if he stuck around during this heat wave or if he flew out and went someplace cooler, because this is Houston. I'm sure that I, I think I remember I just said Houston is experiencing these um, these outages current. And it's all because of Texas's power grid. That's what happened back in 2021. And I'm wondering if it is the same reason for what is going on right now. Are they prepared for climate change and all of these issues of extreme, um, extreme weather? Just a reminder, the power outages tormenting Texas and uncharacteristically Arctic temperatures are exposing weaknesses in an electricity system designed when the weather's seasonal shifts were more consistent and predictable conditions that most experts believe no longer exist. So these, these um, companies really need to update their grids and these systems. But if you live in a state where the people, the politicians deny that climate change is a thing and they don't update their systems, this is why these things are continuing to happen in Texas. They do not believe that climate change is real. They are climate change deniers. Anyways, going back to Texas and the heat, several members of Texas Public Utility Commission urged company officials to improve communication as part of rebuilding trust with customers in the hurricane damaged areas. Infrastructure is going to break, said Thomas Gleason, chairman of the state commission. Things are going to happen, but if people feel like they're being effectively communicated with, it makes, a lot, it, makes it a lot easier to go through. The company started tracking Hurricane Barrel nine days before the storm made landfall. Just after July 4th, about three days before the storm hit the Texas coast, Ryan, the center point executive, said the utility put out its first request for 3,000 mutual assistance workers to pre-position ahead of the storm. As the path of the storm moved east and closer to the Houston area in the final days before landfall, Centerpoint said it increased the request for repair to crews to 10,000. The utility said Thursday morning it will begin providing estimated restoration times on its status tracker. Centerpoint Vice President of Operations Darren Carroll told CNN affiliate KHOU the pace of repairs will begin to slow as the community moves into deeper disaster recovery. I'm skipping a little bit, but it says three months before Hurricane Barrel hit Texas, Centerpoint Energy estimated it would need two billion dollars to harden a system against worsening extreme weather. The company reported it needed to restore power after 15 extreme weather events between 2019 and 2023. The longest restoration time to date after the deadly winter storm and brutal cold snap in February 2021 when it took 116 hours and 40 minutes to restore power to more than 8 million impacted customers. So to that I say this is what politicians need to be concerned with. Texas, a forced birther state, needs to get out of women's uteruses and handle their infrastructure. 
get out of uteruses and handle your infrastructure. Leave women alone and actually deal with the things that actually deal with all people, no matter their religion, no matter their beliefs or politics. And to that, um, go ahead, jump in the conversation. Let me know what you think. Don't forget to like, comment, and share.